Mauritania, the place none of you liked until Swampletix locked himself there. You've managed to make a pretty big impact on the story so far. You've put down Count Draenor, given the Myrkey a foothold in Berg de Rot, and brought the fight straight to the Theater of Blood. After single-handedly killing Rannis Drakan, along with the thousands of other people who killed Rannis Drakan, you've made Lord Lewerniel Drakan big mad. Welcome to Darkmire. First, let's cover our bases. If you want to tackle this brand new master level quest, you'll need to have done Vampire Slayer and the entire Taste of Hope questline. You also need 62 woodcutting, 60 fletching, 56 crafting, 52 agility, 50 slayer, 50 attack, 49 magic, and no rune crafting requirement, praise Mod Ash. To reach Veliaf Hertz to begin the quest, you'll need to go to sleep. Either use your Drakhan's medallion to the Theater of Blood and run north, or take the boat from the docks near the Ectophantus. Since you've all done Taste of Hope already, I recommend just using the medallion. If you've lost yours, talk to Kale Foreshot in the old Myrkey hideout. You also need Navanda's flail for this quest. You can buy a new one in the same hideout from Vertida for 20,000 coins. In addition to a Navanda's flail, you'll need a few other items. Bring a pickaxe, an axe, a ruby, a knife, a chisel, and runes for a level 3 enchant, as well as at least 2,000 coins. None of the combat is too difficult until the final fight, so don't worry too much about your gear until I tell you. Just bring some basic combat armor to beat a few level 100-ish monsters, some food, and a couple of stamina potions. There are also two major locations you need to be able to reach easily during this quest, the Paterdomus Temple and Ditch. To get to the Paterdomus Temple quickly, bring a Slayer Ring to teleport to the Slayer Tower, a Drawman Staff and teleport to Fairy Ring CKS, or use a Canifus Portal in yours or another player's POH. To reach Ditch, simply use your Jakan's Medallion. This will get you easy access to the hideout, to the Dialt mine, to sleep, and to the series of rowboats that you'll be using to get around the area. If you've completed the Mauritania Hard Diaries, bring the Mauritania Legs with you as well for easy access to Berg de Rot, and keep these teleports with you all the time. What you guys are seeing here is a day one quest guide. As soon as the expansion went live, I was right there at my computer at 2.30 in the morning, and of course the servers went offline after a couple of minutes. There was an issue that they needed to reset for, and so they rolled the servers back. It took several hours. And so finally, when I got back on, I started up the quest completely blind. As I'm sure you figured out by now, you'll speak to Veliaf Hertz to begin this quest. He'll tell you a sleeping plague has overtaken the citizens of sleep, <laughs> and that you'll need to figure out what's causing it. He'll send you to the church, and in the church you'll go straight to Hamel the Jester, who will tell you that his friend got sick while they were at the bar. At the bar, ask the totally normal-seeming Carl where the beer comes from. Of course, he doesn't tell you, so you're gonna have to find out on your own. Go around back and click on the barrel south of the bar. To follow Carl, you'll need to stay close enough to track him without being seen, our favorite mechanic from every World of Warcraft expansion. You only need to click four times, once next to the first building, once behind the church doors, once behind the far hollow tree, and once inside the door of the house next to the graveyard, right near the end. Wait until Carl turns around, click where I do, and it should be incredibly easy. If you do get caught, you'll be sent right back to the barrel where you started, and you can do it right the next time. Everyone does quests at their own pace, so it's tough to know exactly how fast I should make the video. For longer sections like this, where action is required, I'll leave it all in, as well as most general movements so you can follow along with me and don't get lost. For some cutscenes and longer travel sequences, however, I might skip the super boring bits so you don't have to sit through them all twice. I'll make sure I'm right there with you for the important parts though, so if I get ahead, don't stress.
When Carl gets to the dungeon, it's cutscene time, baby. When it's your turn, the battle with Croy will immediately start. It's not too hard, just pray protect from magic, avoid the vials he throws at you, and whack him with the Avandus flail until he's dead. If you find yourself taking damage, stay out of melee range and make sure to dodge the vials, but this fight really should be a breeze. After you kill Croy, you're going to destroy both of the lab tables, leave the way you came, and then go talk to Veliaf Hertz. He'll suggest that you go to the Patterdomus Temple, so either use your Slayer Ring, Fairy Ring, or Carl Teleport, and run west to go down to Drezzel. After another enthralling conversation, we need to find Ivan Strong. Ivan is south of Fankenstrain's castle, and the best way to get there is with a Fankenstrain's castle teleport. If you have the portal in your house, or you can use a house on World 330, I recommend you use that. However, you can also use a fairy ring to ring ALQ and then head west, or you can just run east from Paterdomus through Canifus. Oh boy, cutscenes! After you talk with Vanescula Dracon, Veliaf will decide you need some Slayer experience, so it's time to do a little bit of temple trekking. Now would be a good time to bank in Canifus if you need, but you should be fine if you grab the items I recommended earlier. You can give food to your companion, but it shouldn't be necessary at all. Head west of Canifus until you find Ivan, then start up the temple trek. Here, you'll cut three vines from the swamp tree to the east, make a rope, and use it on the branch to get across. To proceed past each area, there are two squares you need to click on to continue like a door from Pokemon. They might be tough to see, but just keep clicking. In room 2, you'll be attacked by Nail Beasts. I was able to pretty easily aggro two and get one stuck on Ivan, only getting attacked by one and protecting Ivan entirely. Then just kill him dead and continue on. Now this puzzle is a real tricky one, and I kinda hate to spoil it for you. There's a broken bridge in the middle of the room, and there are dead trees in the southwest. And you're going to have to repair the bridge with the dead trees. I know, right? This one took me a while. 
If you don't have an axe, you can kill the zombie for one, then kill the three dead trees to the southwest, and repair the bridge three times. Don't forget that you do need the axe equipped in order to fix the bridge. The final room has two vampire juvenants that you'll need to fight with Ivan. I recommend attacking both of them immediately to aggro them, and then take each one to 50% health and spec them with the Avondis Flail. This will freeze them in place, and once you do that to both of them, you can continue on with Ivan to Berg Durat. Once you're in Berg de Rot, feel free to bank, then head southeast to talk to Veliaf Hertz on the docks. He's going to tell you to meet him in the Icene Graveyard, which is where the majority of the rest of the quest is going to play out. From now on, the boat on the docks will have an option to head to the Icene Graveyard, which you can take there immediately. After a ton of conversations, cutscenes, and lore development that I just entirely skipped over, you'll need to solve a Kakurasu puzzle to get into the mausoleum. Every time you mark a square with the Ceridomen symbol, it adds the number on the top and the left to the totals on the right and the bottom. You'll need the sums on the right and bottom sides to add up to the number shown in every column and row on the board. A flag is used to mark a square that you know certainly won't add up in that row. It may take some fiddling around, but if you get stuck, there are plenty of guides online on solving Kakurasu puzzles, and if I find a puzzle solver, I'll link it in the description. Everyone's puzzle is different, so unfortunately, you can't just copy mine. Oops, skipped another cutscene. Now that you're out, talk to each of the Myrki members. The list of members is in your quest guide, and make sure that you don't leave the area before every name is crossed off. Veliaf won't agree to your plan until every other member has, so you have to speak to him last. Once the gang is on the same page, we've got to go to the worst place in RuneScape, Meyerditch. I hope I'm not the only person who has a hell of a time getting around this city, but hopefully I can help you out. Go to Meyerditch via your medallion or the boat from the Icene Graveyard, then speak to any Virewatch and ask to be sent to the mine. Once you're in the mine, use your pickaxe to mine 15 dial ore, put it into the cart, and then ask any vampire to be let out. After exiting the mine, follow my steps. Go southeast, around the building to the east-facing door, then through the tapestry, through another door, and down the stairs to meet Sophalon. After speaking with Sophilon, you'll press on ahead, where you'll be ambushed by two vicious Bloodvelds. Fortunately, since you're a Slayer Master, I'm sure you know how to take them out, but you can pray melee if you're worried.
Search a bookcase to the west, bring the book to Sophalon, and then you're ready to leave. Teleport back to Berg de Rot or Meyerditch and bank if you need to. You'll need at least 8 free inventory spaces, and you'll be equipping new chest armor, legs, and boots as well, so either bank yours or leave another 3 free inventory spaces to unequip them. Head back to the Icene Graveyard and speak to the gang, who will tell you to go get a disguise. Head to Meyerditch with the boat or your medallion and talk to Trader Sven in the southwest of the city. Buy a Virewatch disguise, all three pieces, and then head into the Meyer Key hideout to get it all bedazzled. Head back to our favorite spooky graveyard and talk with Benescula, who will send you on a mission to assassinate the Vire Noble terrorizing sleep. This fight isn't difficult, but if you're worried about your HP or your hardcore status, you might want to bring an anti-poison for this fight. The poison didn't bother me though, and I didn't take much damage. Meet with Veliath outside the church in the same place you started the quest, and he'll start the fight with Damien. Like I said, this fight is a breeze. I simply prayed magic and whacked Damien, stepping on the fires whenever they appeared. They will reduce your damage, so you definitely want to step on them, but beyond that, that's how many mechanics there are in this fight. I did get poisoned immediately, but I barely took any damage throughout the fight, and I wasn't really worried. The only important thing to remember is to speak to Veliath before you leave here, make sure that you don't teleport out or anything, otherwise it might be tricky to get back and speak to him to continue the quest. This next step might shock you. We're going to return to the Icene Graveyard, where Vanescula will give us another mission. We're to take our disguise, sneak into Darkmire, and chop eight Blisterwood Logs for the Mire Key. Fortunately for us, the entrance to Darkmire is right next to the Dial Mine. We're going to get there the same way we did before. Speak to any Virewatch in Mire Ditch and get sent there, but instead of mining 15 ore, we can simply speak to a vampire. Since we're wearing a noble's disguise, they'll let us ride out. Then we can walk up north to the crack and slip through. Welcome to Darkmire. Run around the city counterclockwise to get to the Arboretum. There's a bank right outside where you can restock if needed, and now would be a great time to get an axe and free up 8 inventory spaces if you haven't already. Try to enter and a guard will stop you. Like the South in the 1860s, he wants slaves real bad, so we've got to go back to the southeast part of the city to get him some. The person you need to speak with, Mordan Nakazi, is in a house near the eastern wall. He'll split the difference and send you halfway back to the Arboretum, this time to a prison in the north. After another fun cutscene, head to the Arboretum again, where you'll be let in this time. Search the shelves for a note which will tell you how many total gallons of water are required to harvest from the tree. The number of gallons is unique to each player, and this is a quick and simple math problem. My tree required 34 gallons of water, so I needed to run the 7 gallon valve twice and the 4 gallon valve 5 times. Once you figure out how many cycles to run each valve, cut 8 logs from the tree. Like a boomerang, we return to the Icene Graveyard. Talk to Veliaf and you'll get sent on another mission, astounding us all. This time, you'll need to arm the Meyerkey in their hideout. Head back to Old Man Rawl's house in Meyerditch, where we got our Vire outfit all gussied up, and give the longs to Vertida. He'll teach you how to make a Blisterwood Flail, and if you've got all the items I told you to bring, you can make it right now. Otherwise, you can go to any bank. Grab a Blessed Sickle from the crate and use your cut ruby on it. Enchant the sickle with your level 3 enchant spell, and create a Blisterwood Sickle with a knife and a log. Then you use it on your Avanda's flail, and you make a brand new toy. It's time to gear up for the final fight. Wear magic defense armor or melee strength gear and your newly made Blisterwood flail. The fight against Vanstrom Klaus is tough. 
There are several mechanics that will hit you for 20 to 40 damage when not dodged immediately, and you can go through a lot of food in this fight. I recommend bringing a super combat potion, one or two prayer potions or super restores, a teleport out, and any ranged weapon, and the rest should be high healing food. I used a blowpipe for range, but if you bring a short bow then make sure to equip arrows. You won't need any other range gear however, just the weapon switch. Talk to Veliaf and Iseen, and then find Saphalon who's having a bit of an emotional breakdown. Have a chat, and it's time to fight. This is a tricky one, certainly more difficult than most other master level quests. Vanstrom will attack you primarily with magic, so pray protect from magic to block most of his damage and healing. He also uses three special attacks, and reacting to them can be really tricky. He can summon a small blood veld which will charge you and explode, similar to the crab in Vorkath's fight. Swap to your ranged weapon and hit it for 5 damage to kill it, then avoid the puddle it leaves behind. If he creates a blood orb, it'll heal him over time and need to be destroyed. Stepping next to the orb will destroy it, but it'll damage you for 30, so you can step behind it and lure Vanstrom into it, who will take the damage instead. Finally, if he says stare into darkness, step away immediately. If your character is facing him, you'll take 30 to 40 damage. One strategy for both phases of this fight is to step around Vanstrom Klaus in a circle, hitting him on each side with auto retaliate off. This will prevent you from standing in one place for too long and from facing him for his darkness attack. If you do take damage during the first phase though, you can eat up during the transition between phases. After you bring him to 0 HP, Vanstrom will heal for 200 and begin to summon lightning on the ground. You have to react very quickly to dodge these, so I recommend just stepping onto a safe tile after every hit you make. Dying isn't the end of the world though, so if you get hit by too many special attacks, you can teleport out or die and reclaim your items from Veliaf for 50,000. I died several times when attempting this fight blind and finally realized that the world I was on was lagging heavily. Switching to a low ping world made the fight significantly easier, and I recommend world hopping if you have issues dodging the bad stuff. There you have it folks, quest completed, Darkmire unlocked, and runecrafting experience acquired. I checked and you can't bank this tome, so you'll have to use it right away for 15,000 experience three times. It's pretty sad that all the Mire Key are dead and all, but hey, that's an hour of bloods so that I'll never have to runecraft. With my quest cape reacquired and my diary cape retrimmed, I'm gonna declare mission accomplished. I'd like to thank all of the awesome people in my clan chat and discord that have helped me prepare for and explore this new quest and expansion. If you want to come hang out and talk about Darkmire, join my in-game clan chat OSRS Curios, or click the link in the description to join in discord. Subscribe for more videos about the expansion, and until the next one, peace. Of a bar to lead 